everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I wanted to talk to everybody about Steam and Cryonite to kill bedbugs and their eggs on contact. This is a video that I've long wanted to put together. And what I want to do is I want to talk to everybody about the differences between the two technologies. Now, in the industry from a bedbug control perspective, we use those two we use those two tools to kill bugs and eggs on contact without having to use pesticides. And so say we see a bunch of eggs and bugs on the surface of a couch, we can take a steam machine or a cryonite, which is also called ultra-freeze, and there's a bunch of other t uh, terms that they use to describe it, and hit that area where the bugs and eggs are and kill those bugs and eggs. And the reason why we do that is because many pesticides that we use won't kill the eggs or won't have any effect on the eggs once they hatch. And so that's why we choose these non-chemical tools. Now, there are pros and cons to each of those systems. Now, up front, I want to say that I am a fan and use professionally STEAM. STEAM fits the protocol that I've developed best. And from an industry perspective, I, you know, I'm pretty confident in saying that there are a significantly larger number of companies that are using STEAM versus Cryonite. Now, there may be some issues with that decision, and I'll talk about those in a second. Um, but you can use cryonite as well, which is, they're just opposite ends of the spectrum. Steam is introducing ultra-hot, cryonite is introducing ultra-cold. And so, what I want to do is show you some uh, demo clips that we filmed on location. Um, I don't have a cryonite machine, as I said, we use Steam. But a company out of Brooklyn uh, called Dialabug offered their cryonite system up to me to film this video. And so I went out there, brought some live bugs with me, and we filmed a couple different scenarios. And I want to show you those scenarios and show you why we choose steam over cryonite, but also talk about the pros and cons of each. And so to kick this off, I want to show you a clip about steaming bed bugs under a towel. And so we went out to this location, and what we wanted to do is, as I said, we use steam. And the reason we use steam is that you can take a steamer and a steam head, put it over top of a pleat or a fold on a couch, and the heat will penetrate right through that. Couches are very difficult to treat because you can't apply a lot of pesticide in many of the areas that bed bugs are hiding because people are making contact with those areas. But when bugs get deep underneath those folds that naturally exist on most couches, it's very difficult to get to them and pull those bugs out. But you can take a steamer and put it right over top of that area and it will penetrate through all those things. And so that's why, that's the primary reason why we use and I use steam, is to treat couches. It makes couches way easier to treat. And so I wanted to demonstrate that if a bug is hiding underneath a towel, which you'll see in this clip coming up, that simulates a bug hiding underneath a fold in the fabric on a couch. And so you're going to see, I'm going to take the steamer, I'm going to put it over top of that towel, try to move it about an inch per second, you're going to see the towel gets stuck to the steam head. But nonetheless, you'll see me do that. I'll then open the towel up and we'll remove the bugs and monitor them over some time and show that they are in fact dead. And so, take a look at this clip. I can't even get my hand close to that. And then we'll move this back. And both of these guys are out, can't even touch them because the water that went through the towel um, with the steam application is so hot now. And so here are two bugs that I just steamed, and they turn actually a very, like, uh, I call it a smoky white color once you steam them. They almost look like bed bugs that have been boiled, um, which is kind of what has happened. And so here we have our bed bugs, and you can see I held it over there for a short amount of time, quickly penetrated through that, and uh, we have our dead bed bugs. Now, when I talked about this steamer a second ago, you saw me do this without a towel around this. A lot of times when we do this, this is actually the towel I would use. I would put a towel around this head, like so. And what that does is it limits the amount of water that's introduced into the equation. Because um, usually, you know, when we're steaming, we wouldn't want to introduce that much water. Um, but this is just a demonstration just to show you how heat does penetrate uh, a little bit better than cold does. Okay, so you saw in that clip that when I steamed over top of that towel, that heat penetrated right through it and did kill those bed bugs. And the goal of this video is to show you what tool we use, why I use steam, and why I think steam is a better option. And I want to also though present some cons of steam because there are some things that you need to be aware of. When you use steam, it's obviously introducing 180 degrees or hotter to the surface that you're applying it to. You need to be careful on certain surfaces. Uh, a smooth, uh, finished 
piece of uh, wood furniture like the desk I have in front of me. If I took a steam head and applied it to the surface of this desk, it may turn that finish white, which of course is damaging the furniture. You are introducing a high, high level of heat, so you need to be aware of that when using steam. Obviously, there's water involved, which you can manage by putting the towel around the head, which I talked about in the clip you just saw. Um, but nonetheless, the biggest thing to me is that that heat went right through that towel and killed those bugs that were hiding under the towel, which simulates a fold on a couch. And so, that's why we choose steam. Okay, so in the next clip, what we're going to do is I'm going to now take cryonite, and I'm going to do the same exact thing. And you're going to see um, the person who's helping me out, Rich Ramirez, come from the uh, right-hand side of the screen. Nope, left-hand side of the screen, sorry, the way you're looking at it. And he's going to apply cryonite to the top of that towel, get a good application to it, and one of the concerns I have with cold, whether it's cryonite or anything else, is that it, cold does not penetrate as well as hot does, and cold treatment can be very misleading, where it's going to look like the bug is dead, and it may not be, which this clip is going to demonstrate very, very well. So, take a look. So what we'll do, we'll give that a second to set in. And here we have our bugs from before. And our two steam bugs are still not moving. And our first cryonite bed bug is still actually not moving as well. And see, that's frozen together, which makes me guess these bugs are probably going to be dead. So we'll move that guy away from the cold. This guy away from the cold as well. And we'll leave those guys for a while and see what happens. But my okay, so it's been about two to three minutes since we did the last application. Remember, we had these three bugs up here, the two steam bugs, and the bug that we hit with Cryonet before. And we had the two bugs over here that weren't moving right after we hit them. And you can see now, if I poke these guys, they're running around. And so you can see that again, and that was a good application before. You can see that these bugs do, they'll act almost like they're dead. And then you leave them, you go do something else, you come back and you had two dead bugs here and you're looking for them and you're like, where did my bugs go? And they ended up running away. Uh, because it takes them a little while to, I don't want to say thaw, but to warm back up. And these bugs now did and now they are running around. And so, obviously that is the concern with, with freeze, with cold, is that, you know, they go into that, that dormant type phase and then they end up coming back later on down the road and say warm up. And so, I think the take home to this is that if you're going to use any type of cold technology, whether it's cryonite or, or putting bugs in a freezer, or whatever the case may be, you want to make sure that you're getting cold enough for long enough. You want to be freezing for as long as possible. Um, and it's always a good idea if you're using this from a pest control company's perspective is to take a few bugs in the area you just treated and set them aside and come back and check them an hour or two later as the treatment's going on, if you can. You can't always do that, to make sure that they did die. Because a lot of times you can look at something and think something is dead when it's actually not. Alright, so pretty amazing stuff. You could see that when we cryonite or ultra-freeze the top of that towel, the cold did in fact penetrate that towel. Remember, the towel's very thin, and so that wasn't necessarily shocking. And I even actually thought the bugs were going to die based on what I saw. And lo and behold, when I took those bugs and set them aside, a couple minutes later, they got up and ran away. And that's something we have seen in the past with cold. Now, if you're going to use cold, what you want is you want an extended exposure. I'm not going to tell everybody that if they don't take, say I had bed bugs in this pen, and I took this pen, and I put it in a Ziploc bag, and I put it in my freezer at home, that the bugs aren't going to die over the course of a week. Yes, they probably are. But for a short-term exposure, like you saw in the clip I just showed you, cold is definitely not a great option. Also, when it comes to like large couches or upholstered furniture, I've talked to people that have put them outside for months on end in below freezing temperatures, and when they brought them back in, say, three months later, the bugs came right back to life and started running around. And so, you can see what the concerns are, and what we call that is we call that user error, where the person applying the cryonite or the ultra-freeze technology may, you know, have some things that they need to be thinking about when they're applying it, and setting the bugs aside to make sure they did in fact die or the amount of time they're hitting them with the cryonite may be a good thing if you can do it. Now, you can't always do it, as I said in the clip, but if you can do it. Alrighty, so the penetration and the exposure time are two concerns I have with the ultra-freeze technology. Now, in this last clip I want to show you, I'm going to talk about the velocity of which cryonite comes out of the machine. You probably saw in the last clip, when I hit the top of that towel, 
that snow was coming out pretty rapidly. And that's another concern a lot of people have about cryonite, is that if you're not applying it perfectly, meaning that you're not applying it straight down onto the bug, if you're hitting it at any type of angle, you may end up blowing the bug off of the surface before the bug actually dies to that cold exposure. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about heat and the towel and the, putting the towel on the, head, on the head of the steamer. And so go ahead and check this clip out. Okay, so another concern with the cryonite system is the velocity at which the snow or, uh, you know, the dry ice comes out of the unit. And so if we take this leather chair, for instance, we have some pleats and folds in this leather chair that bugs could theoretically be sitting in. And you'll see that when we treat it in a second, you will see the snow or the dry ice kind of shoot all over the place when we're treating it. Go ahead. Okay, so now if a bug was sitting in one of those cracks and that came along, that would probably shoot the bug off of that surface before it actually killed it. Now it's a user situation, meaning that the person applying it needs to be aware of that and either hit it at a more downward angle or watch to see that that's not happening. Now it's tough to do, you know, if you had a bug on there and you shot it off of there, it's going to be tough to find that bug. But it's definitely a concern when it comes to the application of crying, it's shooting the bugs off of the surface. If we take our steamer, for instance, and we put the towel on the end of it, and we hit our trigger, you can see that the steam is billowing up off of it, but it's not coming out at nearly the velocity. And so if we are treating this surface and we had a bug sitting on this, that's very hot to the touch, and we wouldn't have shot the bug off of that surface. And so if we have bugs sitting on a surface that we think we could blow them off of, steam, especially with a towel attached to the end of it, may be a better option. Alrighty, so that's the last of the demos I wanted to show you, and I think those three demonstrations really illustrate why I tend to choose steam over cryonite. Now let me say up front again that this video is not intended to sell anyone on steam versus cryonite. This is just intended to show you how I came to the decision that I made to choose steam over cryonite. And it's because in our protocol we're trying to get penetration on pleats and folds on couches. And you can see that heat and steam penetrates better than cold and cryonite does. And that's really the biggest reason why we choose steam over cryonite. I also feel that there is some other user application error involved with cryonite that I don't think steam quite has as much of. You know, steam you can damage surfaces, uh, but with cryonite, you know, not only can you have user error in terms of hitting the bugs at an angle and shooting them off the surface, you know, you always ha I would always ask myself, you know, are the bugs dead? Are they just frozen temporarily? If I leave in five minutes, are they going to bounce back to life? With steam, when you steam those bugs, 99 times out of 100, if they look dead, they are dead. Um, and so that's why it's just a more definitive thing to me. The other reason why people choose steam over crying is also because of the overhead. You know, your average steam unit, depending on the quality, usually runs between $500 and $1,500. And, you know, it depends on, like I said, the quality you're looking for. A cryonite machine is going to run you about $7,000. And so, because of that, cryonite tends to be more of an industry tool. Uh, most of your homeowners aren't going to go out and spend $7,000 for a cryonite machine. And so, a lot of pest control industries are really the only ones that are using cryonite for the most part. And so... That's the video. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Dial-A-Bug out of Brooklyn, uh, Joel Fagan, Lance Gordon, and uh, Rich Ramirez for helping me out with the video. I really do appreciate it. Uh, as I said, I didn't have a chronic machine and they loaned theirs to me to use, and so thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions on the information presented in this uh, episode, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com, and I hope to see everybody soon enough.